this is a really quick demo of using PCI pass-through on Linux to pass through PCI graphics cards to a Windows virtual machine to get direct access in the virtual machine so you can play games, uh, mine with Windows software and it's negligible performance hit so it, it's almost 100% performance you know. Um, what I'm using here is Ubuntu Server Minimal with OSWM Window Manager so it's literally a black box using hardly any resources um, using Vert Manager, that's Vert-Manager which is a front end for uh, libvert Kimu KVM. This makes things a lot easier. So, you know, libvert front end. Um, one of the main things to consider is when you're making the VM, I'll show you on the information, click add hardware and you add a PCI host device. Now it's, you need to locate your graphics card here. So if I do, I'll go to the terminal and run this command, lspci hyphen, sorry, pipe grep VGA, you'll see all of the PCI VGA graphics cards. Now I've got one NVIDIA for the head, which is a really old, like 10 year old graphics card with 64 mega RAM, and two AMD's um, R912 ATX. And you can see what slots they're on, PCI 010203. So I basically added those there, PCI 02 and 03. And it's important to add the point 0.1 and the point 0.1, which are the audio devices, which are embedded into the, the graphics cards, which Windows would need, whereas it might freak out and give you a blue screen. And another th important thing to consider is when you're making these VMs is use OVMF so you can install that in Synaptic or apt-get install OVMF and that's a UEFI uh, open BIOS so it's an open source BIOS um, and also you need a UEFI compatible Windows installation media I mean I'm, I'm personally using Windows 8.1 uh, build 9600 uh, N edition one more thing to consider is your XORG config now I invoke XORG using X in it so the command I use is x in it, user bin, uh, OSWM light, no listen to user bin, layout nv, so that, that's the important part, layout nv. If I show you the XOR conf, I've got three different layouts, I've got a gaming layout, which is essentially the same as the server layout of AMD, and this, the, the other server layout is nv, so when I invoke this um, window manager, I'm invoking it to use the NVIDIA graphics card, which is a head and uh, I've removed the module of FGLRX because if, if the system uses an AMD FGLRX the Windows Virtual Machine won't be able to pass through the graphics card so it's important to use an NVIDIA or something embedded maybe an onboard graphics as the head now I've got the NVIDIA connected via VGA keg holding the heatsink on which is pretty ghetto but it works it's like a 10 year old graphics card, 64 mega VRAM and the R920X is connected via HDMI to the same monitor as the NVIDIA. This other one is on its back of mining. It's not very good for gaming to have it like that, but it's connected here to a one-time slot. This one's pretty good for gaming. Well, I'm playing off one hundred four teams that don't play more because shit. Um, so now if I go to my monitor, simply change it to HDMI, we have the Windows environment. We have Windows 8.1 build 9600. But I can't move the mouse or keyboard. So what we need to do, because I'm using the same mouse and keyboard, you can use separate ones and pass them through, but at the moment I'm using the same. If I click inside this VM, give it focus basically, and go back to HDMI. Windows will now have the mouse. So now I can run a miner. Let's, uh, this is Claymore Miner 9.1, which is for Windows only, which is good for mining Zcash. So I'm going to run that. Here we go, Zec Miner. You'll see it's recognized the GPUs, both of them. Total cards too. You can see down in the start menu when you let me check. When you add or remove hardware it shows it there. You can you can actually eject the graphics cards, which I wouldn't recommend. So they show up there when you pass them through by PCI pass through. You can see we've got good hash speeds on these. This is R9 to ATX times two. Yeah. And we're getting like you know almost 420 hashes a second, which is pretty good. Um, it's good for playing games as well, like I say. But if you're playing games, you want to pass through a separate mouse and a separate keyboard directly, because then you will have you know uh, direct access to the mouse and keyboard from Windows, which is essential for gaming. You don't want to do it like I'm doing at the moment for gaming, because I'm just using it for mining at the moment. As I say, I've, I've stopped playing Final Fantasy 14 because it's, it's a piece of shit. Final Fantasy 15 is pretty good though, but that's besides the point. But yeah, there you go direct access to PCI devices through a Windows VM using Vert Manager Kimi KVM. And I do recommend Ubuntu Server Minimal and installing it from the base up. Don't use 
regular Ubuntu Unity, it's a piece of crap. And I can go back to my desktop if I want. Go on to input. Change to RGB VGA. I think the batteries on the remote are going. But yeah, there we go. Now I'm back here. And that's it. You can set the amount of cores, whatever, you know, as usual. I'll give it one core because it's just mining. Um, I'll leave some information in the description of what tools I'm using, etc. Feel free to leave comments, but I can't answer all the questions, obviously, because, you know, the nature of things. Cool, and I hope people use this as we transition to more gaming on Linux, as Microsoft have a stranglehold using DirectX dependency. Vulkan API is awesome. Let's hope more games use Vulkan API on a cross-platform.